are you ready to be uh, brainwalked the same way as we did with Bjorn yeah, on the, let's, on let's the last try. recording? No, same that's way. fine. Okay. That's fine. I see the code. Uh, you explain what it does. Yeah. We shouldn't go line by line. Otherwise, no. people are gonna drop. But, but are gonna the, drop. the thing is that, it, it, for example, if you're in the lobby, I can see. I have all the available inputs, and I see does this uh, callback return a valid mm -hmm. action for this? Then I pull that from the from that list and put it yeah. in a specific. So these are the inputs that is currently available uh -huh. and currently in the game. Yes. So and then you go like one by one. Yeah. So then I then I I can create a, a table of all the inputs that is available for this instance of the game. Right. What about the controller script? Like if, like we, we've spoke we, we've discussed input, but yeah. what about the actual well controller? Like uh, do you have everything in messages? Do you have everything in update? Yeah, How so is the game controlled? Since much of the what actually happens with the snakes and stuff is actually just responding to different actions. Mm -hmm. uh, that logic is in each of the uh, uh, snakes mm -hmm. scripts, so okay. it should just react on what's what right. they input it. We'll look into it. Yeah, so, so I guess the main the, con the control script is actually just sending information to the game and to GUI, I assume, because yeah, GUI is GUI, separate. Yeah, of course, yeah. So GUI is also self-sustainable, it's separate from the code, yeah. the code is a controller, uh, and the snakes are also self-sustainable. Yes. Shall we look into the snake? That's or brilliant. into snakes? I assume it's like a single game object Yeah. done multiple times. Let, let's take a look at the game. Mm -hmm. game. So we jump into the game collection. Um, boop -doo. So the game, game object here, it should have a snake factory mm -hmm. so every time uh, a player joins or it it, it realizes that it has a new action uh, callback working it should create a new snake so let's take a look here yeah snake geo and it just doesn't look like much but <laughs> uh, this is how it's supposed to look actually well you need some good imagination to yeah. to to draw a snake out of a white cube. Exactly. So I, I started out making uh, like uh, a big tile source with all the different combinations. Like I'm, I'm, I mean, I can't imagine that you should sh you shall show. I shall show it. So this is the tile source here. Uh -huh. So I started making like all the snakes being like uh, these different connected mm -hmm. uh, combinations. But I realized that I wanted to have like a smooth motion for all the snakes. Yeah. And then I would need to animate all the different combinations and stuff like that. So tile by tile, or yeah. So the in the initial version just moved each snake like this. Mm -hmm. But if we if we take a look at how it, you can see that it's actually yeah more smooth now. It's super smooth. So. <coughs> Uh, I talked to Johnny in the team and he, he came up with a good solution for that. So what I do now is I actually render um, a white cube a white cube for all, all of the players into a specific um, render target. So then I could uh -huh. just move it with uh, Geo Animate how much I needed. And, uh, and of course tint all the game, um, all the snakes with their player color of course. But are you saying you have several render targets, like each render tar target per snake? I have one render target for all of the snakes, and and they are just rendered like uh, uh, as you saw the the, the cube, mm -hmm. uh, and they are all rendered to one render target mm -hmm. tinted, and then I use that render target uh, when I do the final composition and render to the back. Can we see the code? One. Yeah. And I use a, I use a special a special. Um, uh, let's take a look at the render script here. Let's take a look at quite a bit of code. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of comments uh, commented out code. So this is to draw snakes. It just binds the sets the render target, do some state setup, and view pre-action stuff like that, and but just render the, all the snakes. Mm -hmm. So every snake has a special material with a snake mm -hmm. tag. When I have rendered these to a, a render target, 
which I call render target snakes. When it's time for me to actually render like the background and all the GUI yeah. and stuff like that, I use this render target together with a special material mm -hmm. and render it to the to the back buffer, which will calculate all the edges around the snakes okay. and, and shade them yeah. as like it like it would look if according I, to the direction. Yeah, exactly. So that's what <coughs> that's why if I I didn't solve this. I can show you uh, a bug here. So if I if I move close to this snake, you can actually see that they yeah. they are merged, which yeah. they maybe shouldn't be, but who cares? <laughs> yeah. But it, it it was much easier if the, doing it like this than actually like yeah. doing. A I wouldn't have noticed Photoshop. actually. Yeah. <laughs> and also because it's so fast in the game. Yeah, probably it doesn't really matter, but. When you made the game, you actually see it quite <laughs> mm -hmm. well. Yeah, I have many more questions. We're running out of time. All right, all right. Oh, but uh, like the edges, it's so fun to see the edges like eating the snake. And is it collider based? Like, how do you prove? Um, it's very basic. I just I have, since it's almost tile based, I know where the camera is and I know how big my view is mm -hmm. I just see is this tail outside this uh, coordinate is then it is dead so you just check for the check for the math in the yeah, update I, yeah I in I initially thought that I maybe should use uh, like collision objects but it's felt more easy just to see x and y is it outside the screen yeah. right so this all looks fairly complex to me and lots of like nice and elegant solutions. Um, oh. I assume the snake movement, like the edges, like the graphical representation of the snake mo movement is what took the most time for you, right? Yeah, getting that to behave correctly and behave correctly when someone eats your snake. Yeah. Trying, like figuring out where in my tail should I yeah. cut and what should happen with that and so is it games logic or is it snakes logic it's actually snakes logic it's snakes yeah logic. maybe it should be in the like the game script but um, it's actually so when I when I run over another snake I see at that tile which snake is yeah. the owner of this tail and I just loop up to the to the beginning of that snake and make sure hey your tail is yeah dead <laughs> mm -hmm. so. But the maybe it should be handled in a The in snake this knows it has been eaten. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit of drama. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the main part of the actual like logic for the snakes is, is just in the snake script. Since you play lots, a lot with materials and with rendering, yeah. did, you, did you experience any functionality missing in default? Like, did you put anything to, the, to, your, to your own to-do list? <laughs> um, I don't know. It's all a thing that I don't know if I ended up like in need of it, but it, it would be nice having being able to render to multiple render targets at the same time. But of course, that is an issue with OpenGL ES2 with support that for that. We still want to support. Yeah, it would it would be nice that maybe I could have like more effects for each snake and just yeah. Mm, but shaders, that's, yeah. Shaders and thing. Like any any limitations there, or again, are we we're just limited by Oglias? Yeah, too? I think so. Yeah, yeah, nothing that stands out for this project, but uh, no. Right, and I if we're speaking about the improvements for this game, mm -hmm. so what you're gonna do before you ship it uh, to a public GitHub yeah. link down? Look into that. Yeah. Uh, so remove some audio. Yeah. That you don't have. <laughs> yeah, I, I bought a, I bought the song. I wanted to have like a jazzy yeah. feel, so I bought the song, and that I can't redistribute. So I'll, right. I'll remove that from the song. Then what else? Uh, everything else is fine to use. I guess it's um, as long as people understand the code. I just, just use it if you want. Maybe it's interesting to see like the rendering stuff and how I did yeah. how I saw that. So I assume like, the font, the wobbly font is also the, it's also yeah. a shader, right? Yeah. I need to change like the vertex positions. Yeah. So th then I have a special shader for that. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, 
And also, since the game is so visual, do you how to load, and especially probably on the on the device on your machine? Like, what was your core loop, your yeah. routine? Because it's so visual, so you have to uh, to set up the game in a very specific mode all the time. So, do you use I, on the load? Do you I, use uh, how to load? When I uh, since the b beginning of the game, when I started out, uh, I I just had the game collection. Mm -hmm. Um, and not the controller. So I started out just with the game uh, collection and automatically just spawning two snakes mm -hmm. that I could just play around with. Yeah. Um, I think I did some hot reloading when I did the, the shaders and stuff like that. But once I had like a working game collection, yeah. I started working on the controller collection instead and, mm -hmm. and um, loading in the game collection in a proxy. Right, but then you would want to do s the to rely on the underload function so it's faster to see what's happening, or was the game fast enough that you don't, didn't need underload? Yeah, since, you would just since like, like the game logic was mainly in the game collection, I I didn't need to worry about the game logic once I had that down. Mm -hmm. uh, so then it it wasn't very much of uh, hot reloading. It was just starting mm -hmm. and restarting the game. But when I had that game logic down, I could just let that be and start working on like the menu system, and yeah. then I didn't need to go into the game just to very right. anything more. Right, so it, it, it builds fast enough that you don't need fancy features. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Well, that was good and that was complex. Let's hope that they liked it. Yeah. And let's hope that they take the next step and click on the code. Yeah. <laughs> And get some <coughs> some gray hair by looking on the yeah. shaders. I mean, uh, if, if and learn from you. Yeah, if there is any questions, yeah, just ping me. Yeah, ping Sven. And uh, that's the finish for this video. And see you next time. Thanks, Sven. Thank you. Who did it? Who did it? Who did it? Sven.